welcome to Tales from the Flip Side. I'm here at the Modern Playbook with our top 10 spec list. Let's get this party started. For our number 10 book, we have New Avengers 53. Rich, what do you got for us on this? This book is key for one reason, and it is the first appearance of uh, Brother Voodoo as Dr. Voodoo. Um, not yet the Sorcerer Supreme officially, but he is last page cameo or full page, last page splash. He's wearing the uh, Eye of Agamotto. And that, I mean, it doesn't really have any words saying that he is this, you know, he has become that. It doesn't happen until the next issue. But when he's wearing that and the Eye of Agamotto actually elevated from Doctor Strange to Brother Voodoo, and and he's wearing that comfortably and it's 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 fitted to him and it's working with him that typically means that only the sorcerer supreme can handle that kind of energy you know situation so with right now this book it's a good spec book i like it with uh, especially right after one division i mean um you know th that last cameo with one division where she's uh you know one part of her I don't know if it's like a, a hologram or, or I don't know what you would call Astral that. Form. Like Astro form is making coffee and then her real form is in the back and she's in her Scarlet Witch and she's, you know, doing the dark hold uh, or that doing the uh, uh, practicing from the dark hold. And, um, you know, it's like uh, it, it, then she hears her kids and she opens her eyes. So that tells me that, hey, maybe they're that opened the dark multiverse or the multiverse. Well, with Multiverse of Madness, supposedly Brother Voodoo is heavily rumored to be in that. I don't know how long uh, Stephen Strange will be the Sorcerer Supreme. Eventually, he will have to hand the mantle to somebody else. And I think it would probably more than likely be Voodoo. Uh, Voodoo is also involved heavily in um, Strange Academy, which was a very hot series last year. And it's cooled off a bit, but I, you know, everybody that I've talked to believes that thing has that series has legs. And if so, I just think that uh, he has a good future and this book has a good future, um, you know, long term. Um, you could get this book in dollar bins in the wild and online for between a dollar to four dollars. There's also newsstand copies of this book. Um, you shouldn't have any trouble finding it, Aaron. Um, you know, I, I think the orders by retail is according to Comicron were around 86,000. Now I know that's high, but remember, you know, Young Avengers 1 is is it's a little around that number. Also, New Avengers 7, um the first Illuminati is is actually a 153,000 um ordered book and that book right now is is going crazy. So yeah, I mean, I wouldn't worry about that. I think that if it does happen with this book uh, in the MCU or later in comics um, I, I can see this book spiking long term, and I think this is a good play. And it's literally cheaper than a, a burrito at Taco Bell. Credit where credit's due. You voted for the one in fifteen, also, and I yeah. love that cover, dude. I, I went out and bought it after I saw because I looked it up. I'd never seen it before, and that the variant for that is amazing. All right, that's some good stuff, guys. So for number nine, we have Mighty Avengers number two, the one in fifty. Jessup, what do you have for this? Um. <clears throat> well, we just saw a watch Monica Rambeau turn into Spectrum. Um, she doesn't turn into Spectrum in Mighty Avengers number two. Um, she does in number one, but this is her first solo variant cover to my knowledge. She is on the cover of Mighty Avengers one, but uh, that has, I, I think, three different covers. Uh, this is a one in 50. So uh, the pink just pops. It's a tough nine, eight. Uh, and tough. And you don't see them very often. I mean, I've, uh, the first time I saw it, uh, a buddy gave me a couple to do some work on and submit for them. And it, it's, thank God they were already really beautiful because I can yeah. imagine this thing being a nightmare. I've passed up so many copies of this book and I regret it now because now that we're talking about it, I know it's going to happen. <laughs> yeah. I mean, not, not too many people have seen it. I, I, I breezed yeah. right by it when we were digging up there and I, because I just didn't know what it was. So for number eight, we have uh, Echoes of Future Past, number one from 1984. Mercenot, what do you have for this? All right. Now, if I asked you about a green 
animal, anthropomorphic character that's also a fighter and a warrior, you would answer back Ninja Turtles, right? Well, also this, also in 1984, this debuted um, pretty much at the same time as the Ninja Turtles. This is the first appearance of Bucky O'Hare. And uh, I like this book a lot. I think um, when you think, uh, when you think cheap and just a, a just a cheap copper age first appearance, um, I, this is something I go for. And when I came across this book, however many years ago, I fell in love with it. Anytime I come across a copy for like, I don't know, three dollars, I buy it. And it's going for right now on eBay, like a like a five to ten dollar book. And they sell consistently. And the thing about Bucky O'Hare um, in the 90s, early 90s, he had his own comic book. He had his own toy line. He had his own cartoon. And uh, he had his own video game as well. So and now it was all short lived, but there may be fan there may be some hardcore fans out there and there's a lot of 90s nostalgia going on so you never know for number seven we have x-men number one the 20th anniversary edition all right on uh, this 20th anniversary release as you know uh 20 years after the original x-men number one from 1991 would place this book in 2011. it has a publishing date of december 2011 but it was released in october and at the time marvel was undergoing a lot of revamping they were doing x-men regenesis Ultimate Comics X-Men uh, number two had just dropped at the same time as this one. However, for all the Jim Lee fans looking for remastered Jim Lee artwork and kind of grasping onto that 1991 nostalgia, this cop, this book only sold 11,552 units that month. So not really highly ordered. Uh, not a whole lot of them actually out there in circulation. And I think with all the 90s revival and X-Men nostalgia that we're kind of going through right now, you know, X-Men Legends storyline. Uh, probably going to be some people who are going to be looking to pick some of these back up and add them back to their collection. But this is, this is again, this is just another variant for X-Men number one and probably the, well, not probably it is, most definitely the lowest printed version of all of those uh, being, you know, Jim Lee sold like 6 million copies <laughs> back in 91 for all the different covers and the connecting variant and then the, uh, the deluxe edition. All right, thanks, Ultra. Uh, let's see what we have for number six. We have Captain America, number 25, the second print. Rich, what do you have on this? I like this book. Um, I think that this book does not get enough credit. Um, it's a second print. Uh, it's just the first appearance of uh, the, the Falcon Sam Wilson as uh, the new Captain America. Um, now the the first print of that book uh it it had some spikes uh, a year year and a half ago and um you know it simmered down and then you know roller coaster but you know topped out at about 35 bucks but point being is, is that that book was heavily heavily ordered this book um according to my teammate uh, long short uh, was ordered by retailers uh you know under two thousand but uh, as we know, um, 3,000 is the minimum with Marvel if it goes to a second print. So we'll say it's at 3,000, around 3,000 uh, orders by retailers. But I like the blue uh, trade on the bottom. Um, I guess my point being is uh, of the whole the whole uh, uh, skit right here is is that you know you got you got uh, Daredevil 25, Elektra as Daredevil that goes uh, bonkers. You got Jenica turns into a turtle that goes into bonkers. Well, now you got uh, Sam Wilson. He turns into into the Captain America, and it's a it's a low print. And on top of that, he's he's got a show. It's gonna sh it, it's uh, on uh, the, uh, for the MCU on Disney Plus. It's about to premiere, and I mean this book is is relatively cheap. So I mean I don't know. I think this uh, once people realize that this book is the I guess you could say market's choice of the first Sam Wilson as Captain America 
and how hard it is to find. I think it could actually, uh, you know, give um, uh, uh, investors, speculators alike, um, their their opportunity or chance for maximum ROI or return on return on investment exposure. Uh, you know, since these books are in dollar bets. I mean, what well, what do you guys think? Man, I've never seen one. I go through a lot of dollar bins. It definitely would have been a pickup. I mean, I was picking up the first prints a couple of years back when they spiked, and those would pop up every once in a while, but I've never seen one. At 3000 if that's the actual print run, man, that's almost like a one per store at that time when those books were coming out. I found one and only one. So, uh, and on top of that, I mean, when you look at that, that border underneath it's all it's all blue to me it, it just it looks a lot better than the than the red first print so absolutely it's just even it, just that little simple just that little simple tweak makes a big difference all right good stuff guys all right for number five we have marvel point one the bradshaw variant steve what do you have on this sure so my high print run pick of the week is is this book <laughs> now um so Comicron says 113K copies. It was the fifth best-selling comic in units for the month. This is the variant. Now, it was an open order variant, so we will never know, uh, much like how many licks does it take to the, get to the center of a Tootsie Pop. We'll never know truly how many of, of these are out there. But, uh, you know, say it maybe it was half. Um, you know, then you've got what, you know, 50, 60 K. Um, in any case, um, it was a five ninety nine uh, book, uh, which is, uh, at the time was, you know, uh, pretty expensive. Um, but it's now sell, it's still selling for less than $50 and 9.8 are still averaging about $200. And this is the first Sam Alexander as, as Nova. Um, and now the the I'll I'll do the 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 pro against it, or the uh, or the con against it is is Sam Alexander isn't on the cover, um, where he is on the regular cover. But this is just a beautiful um, uh, Nick Bradshaw cover. The the re the the regular cover just doesn't do it for me. Um, and besides the first Sam Alexander's Nova, I. Th think there's some undiscovered things and if you go check marvel marvel wikia which i know a lot of people do and think it's the authority but i actually i actually read this so um now one thing they say is it's the first, first nick fury as the unseen uh that appears to be totally wrong i don't see that now they there are members of a group called the unseen and the first mention of the unseen so that's in so that's in there but nick fury as the unseen I, I don't think so it does have the first appearance of x terminated and the first appearance of all five members um here's another one with marvel wikia uh it looks like they totally missed the first cane as the scarlet spider and list amazing spider-man 637 instead I, i'm gonna have to do more research but i, I think we may have a first there um, two other notable uh, first appearances, Cold Moon and Dragonfire. Uh, don't people go nuts when you hear that? Okay, they don't. But the reason you don't is because they were created for a mobile game. Actually, I'm not done with first appearances. Um, technically, um, if you want to make people mad, you can say this is the first Doc Ock Spidey because there. this is... This includes the prelude to Age of Ultron. So in the Age of Ultron universe, um, there it's the first Doc Ock Spidey. Um, there's also the first appearance of the 2011 version of the Defenders, um, Silver Surfer, Red She-Hulk, Ant-Man, Iron Fist, Namor, uh, in a Doctor Strange vision. So uh, there's a lot of different plays on it. So despite the possible uh, print run, you know, um i think there's a lot going for this and foremost going back to the beginning sam alexander's nova we know eventually he's going to appear uh whether as part of young avengers or the champions um a group that you know uh, some of us don't like to talk about anymore since last week but um i'll end it there <laughs> all right 
So for our number four book, we have Amazing Fantasy number seven. Mercenot, what do you have for this? This is a book that I've been pretty high on for a couple of years. Uh, now, this wasn't my pick, but when it showed when it showed up on the list, uh, I thought, oh, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. So this is the first appearance of Carmilla Black, who is the new Scorpion. And um, now she has dealings with Modoc, and it makes sense that she's going to show up somewhere on that Modoc series that's upcoming. But um, but even regardless of that, it's a great first appearance. And this book also has a lot of other minor first appearances. Um, like I mentioned a couple of um, a couple of years ago, like when I was trying to find this book, you know, as many copies as I could for cover price. Um, this book isn't necessarily cover price now. I would say it's about um, about a ten to fifteen dollar book, but I think that's still a good buy in. You have a great cover, uh, you have a great first appearance, and you have, you know, I tell you what, it's a it's a great up and coming first appearance, and you have a lot of other minor first appearances. So this book makes a lot of sense to try to go find right now. Like right now. Yeah, um, just to follow up on that, uh, Carter. Yeah, I, I totally agree with you. I, I love this pick as well. The cover is sick. You know, it's just it just feels good. The cut the panel work is beautiful. Um Scorpion Carmilla Black, she's funny. She's also she's also kind of uh, vulnerable, but at the same time, she's vicious. And once she realizes what she has going, she really uh, she really uh, takes it over and 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 becomes a a badass. Um, also, this book does include the first appearance of her mother, Monica Rappaccini, she, and, and her mom is actually a scientist. Um, Supreme of AIM orders by retailers were under 22,000. There's a new stand copy of this book. I would keep my eye out for that one. And on top of that, this, it, just like Carter said, I can confirm that since uh, January, around the middle of January, 2020, um, it was reported by, uh, by um, Verge and Hollywood Reporter that, uh, that Carmilla Black is confirmed for the MODOK animated series. So great pick. And one more thing, I wouldn't be surprised if we saw this Scorpion on like a mainstream superhero team somewhere down the road. Totally agree. Totally agree. Awesome stuff. All right, let's move on to number three. We have Savage Avengers, uh, second print. Ultra, what do you have on this? So this is uh, Savage Avengers number three, second printing. Um, first print sold about 52,000. Uh, units uh, in its initial release, and it still tripped a second printing. So that should tell you guys a little something about the demand for this book. Even with you know all that going on, we managed to find a story that is now since we're we're almost in post King and Black. Uh, the storyline needed King and Black to happen to be able to move forward, and that happens in Savage Avengers seventeen and eighteen, when Conan and Deadpool are actually in, in the thick of everything going on in King of Black. But it all goes back to issue number three. Colin Gath is the uh, basically he's like an immortal wizard uh, from Conan's realm, and uh, he has a symbiote that he obtained when it fell to Earth many many years ago. Uh, Conan accidentally releases that symbiote at the same time he gets a fatal blow, and the symbiote joins with him and saves Conan's life. And what we have here now is basically set up for what's going on, like I said, in the newest uh, run of Savage Avengers, 17, 18, and issue 19 coming up, where the symbiote actually, once Null arrived, the symbiote actually pulls Conan into basically a, like a symbiote cocoon, and he has a conversation with him. He says, look, I'm not going to rest until I kill the guy who imprisoned me. And Conan says, bet. We made a deal. Now we are blood brothers in this pact. Let's go kill this dude. So right here is the is the setup, and then I'm looking for the payoff to come forth in the upcoming issues of Savage Avengers. Oh, real quick, that that book only sold uh, less than two thousand units. It was actually 
1,825 units and was number 367 on the diamond list that month. Wow. Nice. Awesome. All right. So for our number two book, we have Amazing Fantasy uh, number 10. Dollar Ben, what do you have on this? Dollar Dollar Ben, yo. All right. So we got, uh, just like Aaron said, Amazing Fantasy. Now, this is issue number 10, going from 7 to 10. Um, a lot of people get the, the two confused, believe it or not. Actually, a lot of people think that um, Carmilla and the next person I'm about to, or character I'm about to talk to, our first appearances are in this book. But no, it's uh, like I said, Carmilla's in seven, and this 10 is the first appearance and first cover appearance of the Vampire by Night, also known as Nina Price. Um, just a little kind of uh, back origin story on her. She's the uh, she's the niece of Jack Russell. She's the niece of Jack Russell, and if you guys don't know who Jack Russell is, that's the werewolf by night. Um, you've probably heard all the rumors with werewolf by night, and it is connected to possibly Doctor Strange, WandaVision, and Blade. Um, you see where I'm going here. There was, you know, we have a character here that is sought after on a book that was ordered by retailers under 15,000. Um, there's also a newsstand copy of this book. I would keep my eye out. Now, what's cool about this book, it's almost like kind of like your anniversary issue in the sense. You got two stories here. So you got, and that's where the confusion with um, Carmilla Black, uh, Scorpion, and uh, Vampire by Night, uh, Nina Price comes in. Now, there's, the first story is, is Scorpion's story. Um, Carmilla's and the second story is an origin story of uh, Nina Price and how she became the vampire night by night and it's actually a really really good story I, I really like this book long term with Blade being so far out I really think that our viewers should be looking for you know any kind of that Blade supernatural vampire spec this book's in a law it's smart to get this book it's, keep an eye out for Amazing Fantasy 10 all right, great stuff. All right, so for our number one book, we have Captain America 354. Ultra, what do you have on this? All right, everybody. John Walker is going about to be one of the most hated names in households uh, who are watching Falcon oh. and Winter Soldier in about two weeks. <laughs> so what we have here is the, the first full appearance of John Walker as U.S. agent. And like I said, he, he's going to be a household name for people who maybe not have followed the Captain America mythology all the way back to these issues where Captain America was at one time going by the name the Captain. Somebody else had taken over the role of Captain America. Uh, but there's a lot of stuff in that Captain America um, that's still being able to be picked from to tell more stories and some of it involving live cinema, which... I'm kind of excited for this. I think Falcon and Winter Soldier is, is probably the biggest Disney Plus show I've been waiting for. And don't me get too. me wrong, WandaVision was great, but it's not it's not Sam and Bucky, you know? And that's that's the totally dynamic great. that that we're all looking for. And John Walker is going to be that wrench that gets thrown in there because I and I and I'm not going off of anything. I'm just going off of my intuition of kind of what they would use John Walker for. It's kind of like he's the government stooge, the guy who's been hired to take over the Captain America mantle, but then there's two people who deserve it more than he does that are fighting or and I think they're all gonna fight over the shield, which should make for interesting television. Yeah, and um just to follow up uh for um our subscribers, there are, there is a Mark Jewelers insert for this book. Um, I believe there's a Canadian price variant. Uh, you might have to double check me on that, but I know there's a Mark Jewelers on this book. And, you know, it's kind of funny because um, with John Walker, it's, like one, it's one of those, it's one of those characters that um, it's one of those characters that has all these books and <laughs> it has all these books that are centered around them, but the market seems to go, hasn't really chosen, but then like, you know, once the spikes happen, it, they end up going one way, and then they end up going another way. Like, for instance, there's Captain America 323, which is your first appearance of John Walker as a Super Patriot. Um, you have Captain America, I think, at 333, which is the first appearance of the fourth Captain America, John Walker, formerly, I believe, Super Patriot. Captain America 337, which is um, the uh, first appearance of the captain steve rogers and, and i guess 
what would become with the U.S. agent costume. Now, it's not John Walker, but it's still centered around John Walker. But to me, the book is Captain America 354 because, like Ultra said, it's the first full appearance of John Walker as a U.S. agent formerly as a super patriot, but this is the most important character. And this is what we're about to see. I believe on the what 16th or 17th guys. And That's I'm excited as hell. All the way now. Can't wait. Oh yeah. Great pick. All right. Thank you for joining us for the modern playbook, uh, top 10 spec list. Uh, make sure to tune in tonight for comic book women.